Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer, where we bring you the inside scoop from industry experts and innovators. I'm your host, Lisa Kaslin, and today we're going to explore Central Asia. We have uh, Zulia Rajabova with uh, Silk Road Treasure Tours, and she's also an anointed top travel specialist for Central Asia by Condé Nast Traveler. Welcome so much. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. You're welcome. So I think that uh, Central Asia is quite a mystery for many people uh, in the United States in particular. Uh, it's just sort of, you know, this, this shrouded area of the world. Uh, but, you know, in, in talking to you and doing some research before the call, there seems to be so much history and, and cultural wonders there that uh, we really need to take a look at it and talk to somebody who really uh, can, can bring it to light. So why don't you talk a little bit about the countries that comprise Central Asia and you know, some of the, the brief highlights that people should know about. Central Asia uh, countries, they have 3,000 years of history and fascinating cultures and traditions. Central Asia is considered the pearl in the necklace of the Silk Road. And again, Silk Road is an ancient trade route which connected the people of East and West. And when caravans travel from um, from China to Europe or from Europe to China, they always stopped in Central Asia because it was a center of the Great Silk Road where people came not only to exchange goods but also ideas, opinions and knowledge, languages, crafts, traditions and customs. And it's amazing that today travelers can experience the living history, visit these ancient bazaars or caravanserais which were built throughout the centuries, visit this UNESCO heritage sites, or they can also experience uh, the traditions and customs, and they are always welcome in the traditional we weddings or festivals, or they can also interact with local people, visit their homes. In, in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, more cultural exploration that visiting Bukhara, Samarkand, Tashkent, um, and magic city of Kiva. Even Alexander the Great came to Samarkand in the 4th century. He said, everything I have heard about Samarkand is true, except it's more beautiful than I could have imagined. And he said these words in the 4th century. But Lisa, if you go today, you will so you will be so excited to explore this ancient history, but still they are here and people explore them and for cultural discoveries these two destinations is amazing. But if they would like to explore the natural wonders, they can go to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan for spectacular view or for photography, experience in nomadic life, hiking, trekking, and also uh, to be with local family and exploring the bazaars. I mean, it sounds like uh, this is the type of thing that uh, National Geographic episodes are made of, right? Uh, and I, I, I just wonder, you know, there, there's so many riches uh, in, in these countries, but yet it has been so overlooked for so long, particularly by uh, U.S. citizens. What, is that because of the, you know, Iron Curtain and um, some safety uh, concerns? What, what do you think is contributing to this? This is a very important question, and thank you so much for bringing up this. Uh, Central Asia countries, as I told you, uh, they have 3,000 years of history. However, from 1920 to 1991, they were under Soviet Union. They were the republics of Soviet Union, and they were not in the world map. People knew little about Soviet Union. They did not have any idea about this fascinating uh, Silk Road destinations. So we are very excited for the opportunity today to train people, I mean to educate people, to um, to teach people about our history, about our geography, about our uh, rich cultures and traditions and handicrafts. 
and that's why we are doing just we are giving different presentations and uh, also lectures at the universities and museums and cultural societies as cultural ambassadors for these destinations and another point is the history of the ancient Silk Road and the importance of the Central Asia to the world history coming uh, is coming uh, light. Mm -hmm. and what is um, another important issue? Safety. You brought up safety. We certainly understand and appreciate the travelers or travel agents or media's concern about safety, but. If the travelers have enough knowledge, if there is tour operator or travel specialists who gives them the background of these countries, geography, where it is located, where are the Central Asia countries? It's next door to China. Mm -hmm. So if we give this background information to the travelers, mm -hmm. they will feel much safer. Um, to know that geography, where it is located, and at the same time, we are the people who are from Central Asia countries, but now we are in the United States. We know the concerns of the travelers. We know their styles and their uh, needs um, of travel. And we know also the border crossing procedures, visa procedures, mm -hmm. or what kind of airlines uh, are there for them to have smooth travel to Central Asia. So if those informations are correctly delivered to the travelers, they will feel much comfortable traveling there. And most of our travelers, they're coming back from Central Asia and they say they were very safe in our destinations. Why? Because they had smooth border crossing, they didn't have any problems with visas, but in the books or in the guidebooks or in the internet, they can get such kind of um, wrong information, too many information, but some of the information can be, uh, can be right, but they get information about visa procedure and it's scary for them, mm -hmm. or I don't want to spend too much time mm -hmm. getting visas, or I don't want to give up my passport. Central Asia consulates and embassies are doing great job with providing the travelers with smooth visa procedure. Mm -hmm. Let's say Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, you don't need anymore to have visa to visit these countries. Or you can get the visa in Turkmenistan in the border or in the airport. Uzbekistan and Tajikistan uh, consulates are giving the visas within five to ten business days, which is easy, and we are here to help the travelers not to have any problems. So if the travelers have enough information, they will they will feel they will be excited traveling there. And we want them to contact Silk Road Treasure Tours because we are in both worlds. Right. We know what can be done in order they have enjoyable trip in our destinations. Yeah, I mean, I think you you hit the nail on the head. You know, when when people don't know or understand something, they fear it because or or they they don't want to go through the labor of researching. And you know, that's why it makes sense to travel with a known entity, some someone or some organization that is in the country that you want to go to, and they can kind of shepherd you through the whole process. And it doesn't need to be you know work on the traveler's part because you take care of all of that. Uh, in terms of cost, um, is it is it particularly expensive? Is it you know uh, moderately priced? I mean, it's a long journey, um, and I, I would imagine that uh, it may not be too expensive to actually stay in Central Asia once you get there. Probably the getting there is what's costing the most money. Is that right? Um, yes and no. Question here. Thank you very much. Uh, to ask about the costs, uh, for asking the question about the costs and facilities in Central Asia. Uh, what is amazing, Lisa, today we are so excited that to travel to Central Asia can cost from $900 to $1,500 to travel with air, Turkish air or Uzbekistan Airways or any other, you know, Lufthansa and other airlines are today, they are going to Central Asia. The cost in Central Asia can cost from $1,000 
and are based on the traveler's interests, style, and their budget we customize it for. Some travelers would like to stay in the luxurious hotels in these countries. Some travelers say, no, we would like to experience true cultures and traditions, and we would like to stay in the boutique, traditionally designed hotels, which still can provide with luxurious services and has all the modern conveniences. And that's why the cost will not be issue because we are here to customize the travel, uh, customize the trip itineraries for them to have very cost-effective trips in Central Asia. That's great. So I think that uh, you have really kind of opened the gateway now. I think that, uh, you know, our our interests are certainly peaked, uh, and I think you know as you continue to educate us, and you're doing a great job of that. I think more people will appreciate this trip of a lifetime, um, and especially you know many people I think now are are uh, taking trips to China. China has really sort of blossomed, and I think you know you're probably going to benefit as a result of of that, right? I would imagine yes. that. Yeah, that, that there's I agree with you. There. Because travelers, when they call us uh, to our office, often they say, Zulia, I have traveled around the globe. Now I am looking some image, like some new destinations with rich history. And here, Central Asia, and this gives us the big homework to make sure that we would like to do. Uh, we would like to take an advantage of this great opportunity to educate everyone and to tell them that they are such kind of fascinating countries where actually globalization started which can offer for them the trip of a lifetime. Great. I have one more question before we end. Everybody loves to shop. So I want to know, since you're covering the Silk Road, are we going to get wonderful silks when we visit these countries and get it at the best price? Yes. Uh, Central Asia is a place of, I mean, a shop, shopper's paradise, I can say. Uh, you can... Um, you can buy everything because throughout the centuries people travel to Central Asia for goods, for carpets, for embroidery, for jewelry, for for different kind of um, you know wooden items, um, embroidered um, coats and Susanna's textile. These are the destinations of um, these are the destinations where travelers truly want to go uh, to do shopping. And the bazaars are very colorful, bustling bazaars. Not to miss the bazaars in Bukhara, not to miss the bazaars in Samarkand, Ashgabat, uh, Karakul in Kyrgyzstan also. And you can find everything and you can bring something special to your loved ones in, this, um, uh, in the United States. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much again, Zulia. It has been a pleasure learning about you and learning about the stands today. Have a great thank afternoon. Thank you so much. It was my great pleasure, and I look forward to seeing more travelers in our destinations, and I would like to thank most of the travelers for their trust visiting our countries. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.